Respiration. It is the exchange of gases between an organism and its environment. Our respiratory system is designed to supply cells of the body with oxygen and remove the carbon dioxide. Oxygen is needed by cells of the body for the burning of food material to produce energy. We know this process as metabolism. This process converts glucose, blood sugar, and oxygen into energy. Carbon dioxide and water are byproducts of this chemical reaction. The carbon dioxide must be removed from the body. So you may be wondering, what does all this have to do with me flying an aircraft? As a pilot, you study aerodynamics and how the laws of physics act upon the wing. Likewise, to understand how the body reacts to altitude and reduced atmospheric pressure, one must study the components of the body's system. You'll need a basic understanding of how the body transfers oxygen and discards carbon dioxide while noting how the laws of physics act on the body at altitude. There are three places where oxygen and carbon dioxide are exchanged within the body. One, atmosphere lungs, external respiration. Two, lungs blood, internal respiration. And three, blood body cells, cellular respiration. The body exchanges gases with the atmosphere by inhaling and exhaling. During inhalation, the muscular action of the diaphragm along with the intercostal muscles will cause lung volume to increase, along with a corresponding drop in lung pressure. This allows air to enter the lungs under its own pressure according to Graham's Law, which states that an area of high gaseous pressure will exert force towards an area of low gaseous pressure. During exhalation, the muscles relax and the lung volume is decreased. The air is exhaled, again in accordance with Graham's law. External respiration is the exchange of gases between the lungs and the surrounding atmosphere. Let's observe the entire process of how air interacts with each part of this system. The external system is comprised of several complex parts the oral nasal passages, trachea, bronchi, bronchiole, alveolar duct, and alveoli, air sacs. As air enters the oral nasal cavities, it is warmed, moisturized, and filtered. It passes through the trachea, arriving at the bronchi, and enters the lungs. From this point, the air passage narrows and divides until it reaches the end of the branch, known as the alveolar sacs. Though these sacs are very small, they are large in quantity. It's estimated that there are approximately 300 million of these air sacs. If these sacs were laid out flat, their total surface area would cover approximately half a tennis court. Each alveoli is covered by a dense network of tiny capillaries. Capillaries are the smallest blood vessels in the body. Both the alveoli and the capillary membranes are only one cell thick, allowing for the efficient transfer of gases from the lungs to the blood. This stage of gas exchange is known as internal respiration. Internal respiration is the exchange of gases between the lungs and the blood. The principle of Graham's law also applies here. If within the alveoli the pressure of oxygen is higher than the pressure of oxygen returning from the cells by way of the circulatory system, then oxygen will be diffused into the blood. The same principle applies to carbon dioxide. If the pressure of carbon dioxide is lower in the alveoli than the pressure of carbon dioxide returning from the cells, then carbon dioxide will be diffused into the lungs to be expelled. So, as a pilot, when you go to altitude, the pressure of oxygen goes down. When the pressure of oxygen in the atmosphere is reduced, the pressure of oxygen in the lungs also goes down. This will result in a decreased pressure differential between the air sacs and the oxygen-deficient blood returning from the body. The result? A shortage of oxygen available to the body. This problem is termed hypoxia, which will be discussed in a later program.
As we ascend to altitude, let's follow the movement of oxygen and carbon dioxide in the body. An important point to remember, all gas movement within the body is dependent on the difference in partial pressure of that particular gas. Pressures are established and act in accordance with Dalton's law, which states that the total pressure of a mixture of gas is equal to the sum of the partial pressure of each gas in the mixture. Keep in mind that when working with partial pressure, the percentage of oxygen is a constant 20% at all altitudes. As we breathe, there are four major gases in the lungs that exert a constant pressure in the alveoli. Nitrogen, 573 millimeters of mercury. Water vapor, 47 millimeters of mercury. Carbon dioxide, 40 millimeters of mercury, with the remainder being oxygen at approximately 100 millimeters of mercury. The partial pressure of oxygen at this level maintains an oxygen blood saturation of approximately 96 to 98 percent. The high partial pressure of oxygen diffuses through the air sac wall into the blood. Under the same principle, carbon dioxide diffuses from the blood to the alveoli. Blood carries food, oxygen, and water to the body cells. It also transports waste material from these cells. Its additional function is to maintain the body's heat. Blood is made up of two parts, plasma and solids. 90% of plasma is water, in which many substances are dissolved or suspended. The solid part of the blood is primarily made up of red blood cells. The red blood cells are formed in the bone marrow and are responsible for transporting oxygen to the cells. Each red blood cell contains around 250 million hemoglobin molecules. Hemoglobin contains iron, which gives blood a chemical attraction for oxygen and also accounts for its red color. Under normal conditions, this maintains the oxygen blood saturation at approximately 96 to 98 percent. This is called arterial oxygen saturation. The ability of the hemoglobin to become oxygen saturated is dependent on the alveolar oxygen partial pressure, which is dependent on the ambient barometric pressure. Since we know the degree to which the ambient oxygen partial pressure decreases with altitude, it is possible to determine the oxygen need. For more information, refer to your workbook. Normal oxygen saturation goes down as a result of decreasing atmospheric pressure as we ascend to altitude. The ability of hemoglobin to release oxygen is not a linear function of partial pressure. Refer to the workbook for a detailed discussion of the oxygen dissociation curve for human blood and partial pressure at different altitudes. The circulatory system is responsible for the transportation of blood throughout the body. Up to now, we have covered external respiration, internal respiration, and the physiology of the circulatory system. Now, let's discuss the final phase of respiration. Cellular respiration. As the blood arrives at the cellular level, the process of gas exchange works as follows. The partial pressure of oxygen in the cells is lower than the partial pressure of oxygen coming from the lungs by way of the circulatory system. The result? Oxygen will be offloaded to the cells. The same law applies to carbon dioxide. The partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the cells is higher than the partial pressure of carbon dioxide coming from the lungs by way of the circulatory system, so carbon dioxide will be offloaded for return to the lungs.
Respiration is defined as the exchange of gases between an organism and its environment. There are three places where oxygen and carbon dioxide are exchanged within the body. One, atmosphere lungs, external respiration. Two, lungs blood, internal respiration. And three, blood body cells, cellular respiration. The circulatory system provides the means by which the body is able to replenish the nutrients and water required to continue functioning properly. Blood carries food, oxygen and water to the body cells and transports waste material from these cells. All gas movement within the body is dependent on the partial pressure of that particular gas. Normal oxygen saturation goes down as a result of decreasing atmospheric pressure as we ascend to altitude. As you might imagine, our respiratory and circulatory systems are much more complex than what we've reviewed here. However, we provided you with enough information so that you, the pilot, can understand how respiration and circulation are affected by decreased atmospheric pressure changes associated with flight. Other physiological problems related to aviation will be discussed in following programs.